Okay, so we're going to have a look at graphing exponential functions. And exponential functions are just are functions of this form. They take y equals a to the power of x, where a is a constant. So for example, if a was equal to 2, we would have y is equal to 2 to the power of x. That's an example of an exponential function. So let's just graph that on our axes here, and we'll see how they look type in with y equals 2 to the power of x and we get a typical looking exponential function it sort of it takes off as it goes there like that so if we took another example of an exponential function let's say this time the y is equal to 3 to the x so actually I might just change the color and we'll say that this one is 3 to the x and so the value of a in this case is 3 and if we have a look at how that one graphs, we can see the difference the changing A is going to make to the shape of the curve. So it's, it's produced a steeper curve, and I'll just change its colour here so we can see it a bit more clearly. I'll make the other one be blue. So the red graph there is Y is equal to 3 to the X, and the blue one is the 2 to the X. So that's enough to tell us that increasing the value of A increases the steepness of that curve. So let's just write that there. As we increase A, it would increase the steepness of that function. Now of course A stays the same in any given function, so if we're working with this function, um, with the blue function, then A is always 2, and with the red function then A is, is 3, but if we're comparing them, then increasing the value of A increases the steepness of the function. And the second thing we can observe here is that they cross the Y axis at the same point. So if we just circle that there, it appears as though it's halfway between the 0 and the 2 at 1, and it actually is at 1, as we'll demonstrate in a moment. So we'll just we'll write that down too. We'll say that the Y intercept of these functions is always 1. So if we have any function of this form of y is equal to a to the x, its y-intercept is 1. And we can demonstrate that by just having a closer look at what happens when x is equal to 0, because that's obviously x is equal to 0 is what's happening on the y-axis. And when x is equal to 0, then our original function of a to the x, it becomes just a to the power of 0. If we have any number to the power of 0, then that's equal to 1. So that means that 0, 1 is always going to be on the curve, which is that point there um, that we've circled. Now, in the same sort of way, it's also it's useful to have a look at what happens when x is equal to 1 and when x is equal to negative 1, because we can use these points to sketch out or to begin a sketch of the graph. So that when x is equal to 1, then our original function of a to the x just becomes a to the power of 1. And if we have any number to the power of 1, it's just equal to itself. So in this case, it's just a. And so that just means that when x is 1, the y value is a. And we'll just go through the final example when x is equal to negative 1. And then we'll have a look at these on the graph. So when x is equal to negative 1, then a to the x becomes a to the negative 1. Now, a negative indice, it just means we could invert it sort of as a fraction and could write it as a to the power that's in the exponent position, which in this case is 1. So it's the same as 1 over a to the 1, and that's the same as 1 over a. So that means that when x is equal to negative 1, the y value is going to be 1 over a. And so with those three points, it tells us then what happens when x is equal to 0, which is the point we've drawn there, when x is equal to 1, which is what's happening up there and on the other curve there, and when x is equal to negative 1, it would give us the points over here. So let's just have a look at this example here when x is equal to 1. Then this point here on the blue curve, we know that the x value is 1, and the y value is a. So the blue curve, remember, was 2 to the x, like this one is 2 to the power of x. 
So a is equal to 2 in, in this case, which means that is 1, 2. And we can see that that's correct by just looking across there. And in the same way that this red curve, which was 3 to the power of x, then this point here is 1, and again it's 1a, so the value there of a is 3 on that function, and we can see that that is indeed is 3 just there. So that's just an illustration of what's happening here when x is equal to 1. Now it's going to get too crowded to draw in these points in here, but what we might do is just to clear off all this writing on the top for the moment and delete our graphs that we've drawn and we'll replace them with a dynamic graph which just looks like this so that what we've got here is a a single graph where we can change the value of a so if we go to y is equal to 2x we can see that as we change the value of a as we change that function definition it's increasing the steepness as we increase a and the other thing that we can see straight away is that this value here of the y-intercept is staying the same as we change the value of a. So that's what we expected um, from this bit of working over here. It'll always be 0, 1. And the other things we expected is that when x is equal to 1, we expected that this should be 1a. So at the moment a is 2 and that does give us the value of 1, 2. So if we change the a to say 3, it will be 1, 3. So when the definition is 3 to the x, then the point 1, 3 is on the curve, and so on. So when it's 4, the 1, 4 is on the curve. And at the same time that that's happening at the value of negative 1 over here, then we expect it to be a y value of 1 over a. And so at the moment when uh, a is equal to 4, we expect at negative 1, we should have 1 over 4, and a quarter is 0.25, so that's actually on the curve at the moment. And if we were to change that to um, a is equal to 2, then we'd expect in the same way that that would be negative 1 and a half. Again, that's what we've got there with the 0.5. So that by substituting in the values of x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to negative 1, it can be used to sketch out this curve. If that's all we knew and we hadn't drawn the curve yet, then we could use that to sketch the curve so that we would know that it increases quite rapidly up to the right there and it approaches the x-axis down there to the left. I'm just going to cheat for the moment and allow the computer to do it for us. So quickly substituting in x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to negative 1 is a quick and a useful way to start a sketch of these graphs.